more global, um, meaning the entire, the rest of the world. Uh, also other issues concerning Brexit and so forth. So the world still remains quite uh, uh, on a sort of a very, and there, there are a lot of uncertainties in the, in the global uh, sort of uh, markets and global considerations. The forex, forex market for us has remained fairly balanced, quite balanced actually. And uh, the point here has been actually our export sector has been doing well in some commodities, for instance, tea and horticultures. Um, now, with regard to tea, the volumes have been low, as we know, because of the rains, meaning the drought that took place. And, uh, but we have uh, been, our products have been commanding a, sub, a premium, and the price of that has, more, has compensated almost fully, not completely, but has compensated partially the decline in volume. Actually, it's interesting that Kenya and India, uh, which are the, the larger exporters of uh, black tea, you also have Sri Lanka as a third one, but Kenya and uh, India have been, uh, in terms of their production, volumes have come down. But they continue to command a premium uh, because of the quality of their teas and so forth. Um, in in uh, Sri Lanka, I think the issue there was more flooding. Uh, so it's not clear how much is going to affect their, their production. But uh, there is concern that volumes will not be, uh, will not be as per, and I'm talking of in the in the markets, in the international tea markets, that uh, the volumes there may not be as before, but what is clear is that these countries will continue to command a premium in their exports. That is on tea. On uh, horticultures, I think also the same, that uh, this has been, has been improving. Um, but I think the ones, I'll, and we've discussed this before, so I'm not gonna belabor it, but I think the points I would make is imports also have remained low. Of course, there are seasonal issues, or rather, uh, everything isn't smooth. So, for instance, uh, just recently we imported a lot of rolling stock for the SGR, which was already anticipated. But okay, you can see that the imports in that in those particular months uh, have surged on, on uh, imports of machineries and so forth, and transport equipment. Nevertheless, the current account has uh, remained as per before, meaning uh, actually the current account to March, we estimate it at 6%. And we continue to estimate uh, or to project a current account def uh, deficit of 5.8% for the, for the year, that is 2017, which as we have said before, we see that as a, as a, as a sort of a, an inappropriate um, level of our current account deficit. There are a few other things I would want to mention here. Tourism, of course, there has been, this is a low season, we all know that. But I think we have uh, seen a lot of interest in conferencing. Uh, that is something that has been, and also the regular tourism, meaning personal holidays and things like that. But I think the point here is, yes, there has been uh, some conferences, and uh, there, there is also prospects of that going forward, looking at the bookings that are there. Remittances continues to do well. It is something like 2.5 percent, a little less than 2.5 percent of our GDP, and that actually has been strong, has continued to grow. Even as in South Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa, in 2016, remittances fell by 6 percent. So in other places, Sub-Saharan Africa generally fell by 6%, but we, from 2015 to 2016, we have, uh, we have uh, recorded a continued increase. That's all I want to say about the, well, maybe to finish off on the external sector, I would say that we have uh, ample buffers. Uh, not only do we have <coughs> policy buffers, meaning we have room to maneuver, uh, in terms of our policies, but I think also in terms of our FX, or our foreign exchange reserves, which are at all-time high records or levels, um, which, again, this gives us ample room for maneuver or, or in case there are shocks 
um, that come in the future. I haven't even added on to this the issue of the precautionary facilities that we have with the IMF. So I'm just saying that we do have uh, ample buffers in this regard. Then I want to talk uh, to two other points before launching into other uh, items. And the first of this is the credit slowdown, to give you some information on that. Actually, just a sense of where that is. I think last time when we chatted, I did mention to you that uh, the uh, if you looked at the large sectors that contribute or that take up 60% of our uh, of credit generally. These are manufacturing, real estate, personal, uh, personal loans and all that, and trade. Uh, I should say agriculture, even though it accounts for something like 25% of GDP, only gets something like 4% of credit. So you could see it has a disproportionately low amount of credit going to this sector. But anyway, so 60% of credit goes to these four sectors. And as we mentioned last time, these sectors were, uh, were credit to them was actually not growing, was falling. And this uh, was, was, had weakened. And this is really contributed largely, or contributed the lion's share to the decline in credit that we had seen since December 2015. The good news is that actually now we talked about, last time we talked about a bottoming out. That's, those are my words from last time. But I think now we can actually say that uh, there has been uh, a rebound, meaning a positive growth. Um, and uh, not only has it bottomed out in terms of levels, but actually has begun to grow in the three sectors, manufacturing, real estate, and personal you know, personal loans and things. And I think this also relates to the what is happening to those sectors, meaning, for instance, manufacturing has actually begun to, we have begun to see positive signs there. Uh, recently, the PMI, for instance, that were on the manu from the manufacturing side were positive. They were relatively strong uh, compared to a month before, a month and a half before when they were rather negative numbers. So I think the point is that you have all the indicators in these sectors are pointing in the same direction, which is up, um, which is something that uh, obviously will be a concern for you, or of interest to you. Then on interest rate caps, uh, we have already said that uh, we have been studying this matter. We do not want to react, uh, to have a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, but rather, let's look at the data, let's understand it, and so forth. So today I will say a bit more. I'll give you the, what the data seems to be telling us so far. We still need to continue. Uh, but I, I'll, well, I'll, I'll talk about the, well, the directions in a minute. The first to point out is we continue, we at the central bank continue to monitor developments with regard to the rates cap. I think this is something that is clear to all of you that we, yes, we do need to monitor um, how banks are implementing this and so forth. The second, which is uh, also important for you to note, is that yes, the, the banks, The uh, return on equity and uh, return on assets, ROA and ROEs, have fallen since, have been falling actually since June 16, June last year. And uh, if I gave you the number, well, the ROE, for instance, uh, was in June last year was, for the entire industry, was something like 18.2. And uh, this has <laughs> fallen in March to 13.6. I'm sorry, I do have April numbers, but uh, the ones I have here in my notes are uh, March. So I'll just give you the ones that are here, and we can update them later. Uh, for Tier 1 banks, this was 34.7 in uh, June last year. And it has fallen to something like 23, no, yeah, 23.1. I believe it's 23.1 in March. So you can see these numbers have been falling. Uh, 
But I guess the point I'm making is you've also reported the, the lower profitability uh, or the lower levels of profits in some of these institutions, the banks, and so forth. And I think it collaborates with these numbers. I hope we understand each other on this. At the same time, the, what has happened, and now I'm giving you numbers or developments in terms of lending and so forth, bank lending to micro and uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, that's MSMEs, has fallen 5.7% between August 16, August last year, and April this year. <coughs> Even though actually small banks have increased lending to this sector. So if you, if you want to know who has reduced their, their lending to this sector, of course it is the large banks that have done this. I mean, this is a, at least that's what the data shows. But nevertheless, the point is that lending to this sector has fallen. This is something we had uh, mentioned before, which is a concern. Uh, there are something like, if I'm not mistaken, something like 1.7 million uh, MSMEs in Kenya. Uh, the data on this can be found in, the, in, the, in, in that study uh, by, or that survey from Kenya National Bureau of Sta Statistics, KNBS, uh, last year, which talked about this. But I guess the point here is that this is a concern because this is really where job creation is and will take place. This is really where uh, output, the potential for growth in output is and will take place. So I think this is a concern, as we can just put it out there. Thirdly, number of loan applications rose. Uh, the number is something like 23.5%. But the values of the applications fell by 18%, which really means that uh, there has been applications of loans. There has been smaller size loans. So people are applying for smaller size loans, which is surprising, but we'll come to that in a minute. In terms of approvals, approvals increased, uh, even as their values, the total values, as the governor of the central bank, uh, Patrick Njoroge, he's also the chairman of the Monetary Policy Committee, and that is what he is giving details of. They had a meeting yesterday, and so just updating the country on the state of the economy. One of the notable things he talked about there is uh, the central bank uh, rate uh, being retained at 10 percent. Inflation did rise from 10.3 percent uh, to 11.5 percent, and this is being occasioned uh, by the increase in food prices. Also talked about the banking sector's large uh, remaining resilient and number of loans growing. Uh, 